it happened in the autumn forest. No, no, it didn't. Um, so we, we were looking at different environments in which this technology could be useful. And having concentrated mostly on the home for four and a half years, we thought, what other locations are is content directly consumed? And the literature, particularly regarding popular music, seems to suggest commuting and the gym. So given the choice of making an object uh, based piece in either environment, we chose uh, a vehicle. So I this will be there'll be a little bit of uh, going back to this morning's talk here, but um, how can these technologies relate to the multiple listening positions you have in a car, the multiple listening conditions you have in a car that you may be driving and it may be static, um, or multiple listeners at the same time. So for about two weeks in early January, um, slightly longer than anticipated, we um, spent a lot of time in this particular car uh, trying to demonstrate the utility of the object-based production approaches. So you can see here, this is basically a slightly large mini. Um, it's not too much of a paradox that you make them. Um, with more speakers than would typically be found in a slightly large mini. So you can see there's a front left and right pair of speakers, a sort of ceiling left, right and center speakers. Uh, and as a way of you know, bringing different technologies from different streams of the project together, we have our soundbar, which Marcus was introducing. Um, in the back of the vehicle, we have a similar setup of, as a left, right and a sort of ceiling left, right. So, and there were a few more uh, drivers, and I'll try not to use that word too much because it's confusing in this context, um, dotted around the vehicle that we used for vibration of the seats and dash in the driving condition. But we were interested in bringing in some producers and content creators and engineers to uh, basically find out what they would do if they were tailoring content for different positions in different environments. Um, so this familiar looking um, graph can now be updated in this environment. So we have our normal audio objects and metadata. The sound of the road and the car itself is also an audio object, as is, say, the voice of the sat-nav. Um, the listeners, well, how many seats are occupied? Uh, just one or two or three, and are there children involved? The devices are all very well known. And of course, now, particularly you know, moving to a more sensor-filled world, we have a lot more knowledge of what is around the environment of the car. Are there obstacles or warnings, and even as we get into AI and, and more wireless connectivity, we'll have a lot of extra objects and metadata, which may be represented as audio if they are warning signals or anything of the sort. So all these things should be collected by the renderer and the experience adapted as a result. Um, so a sort of very quick overview of the system we used. Uh, participants were controlling Reaper uh, as, a, as a digital audio workstation, and uh, we had to sort of build together a lot of patches in MaxMSP to, to drive the system, but they were mixing the uh, the turning forest uh, and a few other scenes, and they had control over the position and volume of all components, all audio objects. They had a choice between panning in the spherical sense, as Jack Bone introduced, and also to any individual driver or loudspeaker in the car. Um, and we wanted to see what they would do in the different conditions when moving from seat to seat, when driving and not driving. And we had this mixing task and then also uh, an interview afterwards to gather their thoughts on what they thought about this um, process. So what we were able to collect from this was, um, well, interestingly enough, something that's done quite rarely, actually just what are the object levels people use when mixing. So this is actually a distribution of mixes for the forest scene. You see the narrator is the loudest element. Satnav is very loud in those conditions. Uh, music is quite loud. Forest atmos is very low, et cetera, et cetera. If you take out the music from the forest scene, you basically get a horror film. So it is very important that that happy music is there. When panning, uh, most of the time, uh, the producers decided to use the spherical panning rather than directly routing to speakers. When they did, it was to either two or three or four speakers. Very rarely would they address to, to every speaker in the car. We also have information on the panning positions they used in two dimensions, um, so the azimuth and elevation. Typically, they would pan to the locations of speakers and it's important to note there's no uh, negative elevation here. There's no speakers below the, the uh, listening positions. And as a sort of example of one case, when in the case of mixing music in the back of the car, this particular uh, participant said in an interview that they boosted the level of, as you can see, bass and kick drum, things that had low frequency information that was being masked by the road noise. And they also boosted the um, level of things that were now slightly further away from them now that they were in the noisy environment. So this is just a very quick overview of, 
sort of a hectic two weeks uh, in January. But what we find from this is that the methodologies and the, uh, the concept of treating everything as an object, as I said this morning, is that we now have, um, we can see that this is useful in any environment. Uh, I said before that you should be able to watch something on television, then walk out of the room and still watch it on your phone. Well, this rendering concept should adapt to any environment, any devices, any listener, any other metadata and objects. And this is what we were able to see in the car. One important thing for future work is to remember that the automotive industry traditionally has always been focused on safety, uh, whereas this sort of Silicon Valley innovation really kind of throws that to the wind. So we need to kind of combine the two and can this these approaches be used to increase safety, particularly when the driver should be focused on driving and not listening to music. So thank you.